A while ago I found this sculpt by Nom Nom Figures while I was browsing up on CG Trader and I have a friend who's really into Overlord and specifically Albedo I think is one of his favorite characters so I kinda had to get it and make a project out of it. Most of the preparation work has already been done but I still decided to make a to-do list just to make sure I didn't forget anything. I usually don't do this and I realized that there's a very good reason for it. I'm not the most structured of crafters and once I spend about an hour planning everything out I put the note aside and forgot everything about it. I still had some sanding to do and while it's not the most enjoyable part for me it's just one of those things that I know I'll regret it later if I skimp on this step and so I just try to power through it as fast as possible without cutting too many corners. I started out by priming everything in grey and while I'm going to be repriming it in black later on for the sake of making a central highlight, priming everything in grey is just a really good way of getting a uniform color on the model so I can see if I've missed any spots with my filling or my sanding. Once I was sure the model was ready for paint, I primed it black and then I gave it a zenithal highlight. I used the two flames as my main light source and then I applied a diffused light from behind. For painting I decided to work with very transparent layers. Albedo doesn't have a lot going on for her in terms of colors. There's a white dress, black wings, black hair, the base is full of grey stone, there's not a lot going on. And so in order to make the piece more interesting, I decided to tint everything to a certain extent. I still wanted the stone to read as grey, the wings read as black, the hair read as black obviously. And the white dress, there's not too much I can do with that. But by adding in just a hint of colour, they're still going to read as their respective colour. So even though I mixed in some blue with the wings, the wings are still going to read as black. But the benefit is that once I start applying the warm light, the yellow and orange is going to interact with the underlying colors and I'll be getting a bunch of really interesting transitions and colors that I wouldn't be getting otherwise. And by working with these incredibly transparent layers, I'll still maintain the entire zenithal highlight underneath and so I won't have to go back and do any more highlighting. All I have to do is apply my transparent paint in order to get some colors on. Then I can apply transparent layers of light and in, at the very end I'll then come in with a brush and do some a little bit of texturing and highlighting around the piece but most of the work is going to be done just by doing this. Normally when you see people painting light coming from a flame, they'll generally use orange. In this case I decided to use a mixture of yellow and orange. So anything that's relatively close to the flame gets yellow. Anything that's further away gets orange. And that's just to create more variety. I could choose to only use yellow as well, but that would make for a very hard transition between the light coming from the front and the blue light coming from the back. With orange coming from the front and blue coming from the back, the transition between the two would end up looking a little bit poopy. And so, in order to avoid that brown color, I'm applying a little bit of magenta into the shadows. Her right wing was a little bit annoying to have to work around, and so I thought the best solution was to strategically, definitely deliberately, drop the figure off camera and break it off. Once I was done screaming, I decided to take advantage of the wing being broken and get as much of the brushwork done as I possibly could in that area before reattaching it. Thank you. 
So in order to give this any chance to hold up during shipping, I decided to pin it. And if you don't know what that is, it just means that I'm drilling a hole into both pieces and then I'm inserting a paper clip or any other type of, uh, of rod that can help stabilize the area. And then once that's in place, I can just glue it together like normal. So at this point, all that's really left is a lot of brush work. I'll go into all of the places where the light hits focus on those areas and try to either just emphasize the light or if it's a more textured surface I'll try and, and paint in some textures. For the sake of symmetry and because this whole process was going way too smoothly I decided to once again off camera to drop the figure and break the other wing. At least it's good to know that my repair holds up better than the resin itself does. So once I was done crying I had to fix that up before I could move on to the final steps. Originally I was planning on leaving the hair as is, but it just seemed wrong to not have any highlights on it. And it's something I usually struggle a lot with, but just like with everything else, if you want to get better at something, you have to challenge yourself. So I decided to try and paint on hair highlights that didn't look horrible. So that, that was the main goal, and I think I sort of managed that. It's definitely not perfect, there's a lot of room for improvement, but I think it turned out okay. After cannibalizing some tea lights and fiddling with some electronics, I got the lighting to work, and this was the result. <laughs> 